Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny. Welcome back to another FNAF news video, but also I want to turn this into just a general discussion video. I took my sweet time making this video because I wasn't really sure if I wanted to cover it on the channel. You may have seen recently, depending on how involved you are on Twitter in the FNAF community, some pretty unfortunate news regarding the Fazbear fanverse. Specifically, the apparent cancellation of the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's Plus by Fiznom. And just to hop right into it, unfortunately, it does seem like the game will not release. So we got that, as well as a whole bunch of other points regarding the fanverse I want to talk about though those thankfully will be a bit more uplifting because it has been a while since I've done a dedicated fanverse video so I'm going to take the opportunity to give you guys the full rundown on everything involved with the fanverse what's going on with all the games the progress being made on them thankfully because I did take my sweet time getting to a video about this addressing what's going on uh Kane Carter the creator of the Pop Goes franchise also in the fanverse put together a really really nice uh sincere thread going over what's going on with the fanverse so I'm going to be quoting and referencing that a lot in this video. If you want to skip around from game to game, feel free to. The timestamp's going to be linked down below, or if you just want to find out what's going on with the FNAF Plus, I don't blame you. That's also going to be linked down below. Kane starts off the thread recapping what exactly the fanverse is, because believe it or not, still three years after the announcement of the initiative, there are still people out there thinking like, wait, these guys are selling their fan games? How is Scott allowing that? Or what do you mean Pop Goes Arcade is an official FNAF game? That doesn't look like FNAF to me. The Fanverse is a collection of popular Five Nights at Freddy's fan games that are now considered official but non-canon spin-off games in the FNAF series. This treatment allows the games involved to receive paid Steam releases with achievements, point shop items, etc. Exactly what we saw with last year's Pop Goes Arcade. Ports for consoles and mobile devices, as we've seen so far with the One Night at Flumpty series. Merchandise with Funko, Hex, U2s, etc. as we've seen from a whole bunch of the projects and other benefits. The initiative was announced around three years ago by Scott, and the lineup consists of Five Nights at Candies, featuring the brand new FNAC 4, The Joy of Creation, featuring the Ignited Collection, Pop Goes, featuring Pop Goes Evergreen, One Night at Flumpty's, featuring One Night at Flumpty's 3, and a reimagining of FNAF 1, eventually titled Five Nights at Freddy's Plus. And now let's start going over all the news we've gotten so far for the game, starting off with Emil Mako's Five Nights at Candy series. Of course, the big project that everyone is anticipating is the fourth installment in the FNAC series, series. FNAF 4 was announced all the way back in 2018, and updates have been few and far between, but it doesn't mean there haven't been any updates. Every once in a while, Emil Mako, the creator, will release a full game joke post detailing what's going on with development, a few details about the upcoming title. Besides that, we've got a few one-off teasers featuring the brand new candy variant. We've also seen the mini candies. And if you're wondering why do we get so few updates on FNAF 4, well, Kane puts it pretty clearly. This is primarily because Emil's time is split between this project, his personal life, pro programming the game Pop Goes Evergreen, as well as yet another brand new entry in the FNAF series, FNAF Fur, which only exists because of the fanverse. We've gotten a teaser trailer for the game, it looks absolutely adorable, it's a full expansion on Candy's adventure from the third FNAF game. FNAF Fur has also received a handful of devlogs detailing brand new enemies, as well as mechanics we're going to see in the upcoming game. FNAF 4 is still in development, but FNAF Fur is something that you should not ignore just because it isn't a horror game. If Freddy in Space 2, Fury's Rage, and FNAF World are not seen as waste, then neither should this. Thanks to the fanverse, we've also seen a handful of merchandise products for the FNAF series, including a Funko plushie, a Hex plushie, a U2's figure, as well as two upcoming plushies from U2's. Now, admittedly, FNAF is the fanverse series we get the least updates on. But frankly, that all makes sense when you consider just how much Emil has to do. He's working on FNAF 4, he's working on FNAF Fur, he's working on remastering FNAF 2, as well as getting ports ready for FNAF 3 and FNAF Remastered. Like we mentioned earlier, that's only for his series of the fanverse. He's also programming Pop Goes Evergreen. He's got his own personal life. And even then, from the small glimpses we've seen of FNAF 4, it looks fantastic. Right, well now let's move on to a game series from the fanverse we've actually gotten a lot of updates about recently, and that is Nixon's The Joy of Creation, The Ignited Collection. If you've watched my FNAF news video, you'll know that we've gotten a whole bunch of teasers and previews and even gameplay for The Ignited Collection, and even though news started off pretty slow with the collection, it's definitely been picking up steam and progress is smooth sailing. We've seen the new models for Ignited Freddy, Ignited Bonnie, and Ignited Chica. They all look terrifying. Drastically improved models and appearances for these guys for this brand new Ignited collection. It's also worth noting that T-Jock's being made in Unreal Engine 5, so the game itself is going to look phenomenal as well as the characters. The game is going well. Simple as that. Nixon recently decided to ditch the built-in remake of Classic Mode. Now, we have seen old
old footage of the plan classic mode i believe all the way back in 2020 that was the very first version of the drawer of creation where you were in an office you spun around characters came out of the doors and closets i believe a window as well and basically you just spun around shined your flashlight at them and they'd go away even in the video we saw there was apparently a point system but like kane's mentioning unfortunately it was scrapped though when you read more it does make sense so that final collection only includes full remakes from the ground up by the way of t-jock reborn you may remember that version of t-jock it's where you're running around a whole bunch of hallways trying to dodge freddy and that mode in the ignited collection we've also seen plenty of teasers and behind the scenes aspects i believe nixon's also trying to make procedurally generating rooms i'd have to double check on that but that would make the mode completely new every single time you played which would be incredible ignited collection also includes t-jock story mode that one i'm sure you've also seen plenty of that's the mode where you're in the bedroom the office the basement the attic as well as some extras now the decision to scrap the remake of classic mode was made to speed up development and lower the price and because well frankly not many people were super excited about playing that old version of t-jock anyway and just as a reminder this game like the other fanverse entries is planned to get a full treatment which should include a paid steam release with achievements presumably console and mobile ports if they can even handle it as well as merchandise which just like fnaf we've already seen plenty of in the form of a u2's figure for ignited freddy a chibi plushie of ignited foxy from u2's as well as one more t-jock u2's plushie releasing this year and now i move on to the fanvera series which has frankly the most content and that is kane carter's very own pop goes we've seen a lot from pop goes and i keep telling you guys I want to do a video going over all those weekly updates that kane would share over on game jolt because those had a bunch of info brand new looks at the characters brand new mechanics revealed a whole bunch of modes and extras planned for pop goes evergreen as well as just general updates on other pop goes works which includes pop goes arcade yet another fanverse entry which not many people know about because when you think of fanverse pop goes projects well you most likely think of evergreen pop goes arcade released on steam it was the first fanverse game on steam actually right now it's got a 97 to 98 percent rating across a thousand views which technically makes it the highest rated FNAF game. And for other Pop Goes games, we also have My Pop Goes, which was revealed later this year for April Fools. And while technically it doesn't seem like the game is a part of the fanverse just yet, it seems likely that Kane and the team are trying to get it into the fanverse. They're even already working on a premium Steam re-release for the game, which is going to be coming out later this year. And just like FNAF Fur, if you're worried, oh my god, all these weird side projects, you're taking time away from your main game Pop Goes Evergreen. Well, Kane makes it very clear this is not taking wait time from evergreen my pop goes is being programmed by someone other than emil so don't even worry about that the fanverse is what allows this kind of game to exist in the first place it's bonus content for those who enjoy the pop goes series it's even not just like a weird one-off thing no it's actually canon to the pop goes story and even includes brand new lore for the franchise now kane goes on to mention other one-off pop goes mini projects including long pop goes as well as the game jolt stickers you can find on his profile and of course goes on to mention some of the pop goes merchandise which we've probably gotten the most out of for any fan for us project i mean we got the funko plushie both of pop goes and blake the badger we've got the hex plushie we've got the u2's figure the u2's pin set a second u2's pin set releasing presumably later this year we've got two upcoming pop goes plushie the first one being the sitting pop goes plushie from u2's now those three projects alone you've probably seen the most of those are the ones that are most involved with stuff like merchandise as well as being talked about by their creators and posting about on their social media pages well we still have two more projects to go and the first one is one night at flumpties now just to be completely upfront with you guys i never made a video talking about the jonochrome situation now just to keep it short and simple just after the release of one night at flumpties 3 back in 2021 jonochrome the creator of the flumpties series was outed as a groomer and thankfully it was ostracized by the community as well as seemingly the fanverse like i said that is the very basic cookie cutter explanation uh since then john has apparently been getting help but i never made a video on it because it seemingly had no effect on flumpty's involvement with the fanverse which again form your own opinion on that i'm not telling you how to feel about that info completely valid if you don't feel like directly financially supporting the flumpty's games they do have mobile ports available for all three of the games on ios and android they're also up completely for free on game jolt i would recommend checking them out i do strongly believe they're some of the best content we've seen from fnaf and from the fan game scene they're really good games the fan Fanverse is the only reason we were able to get that third Flumpties game as well as having the series continue in forms of mobile ports and as well as console ports the One Night at Flumpties Egg Collection was a planned bundle of all three of the Flumpties games packed into one for consoles 
though, though it does seem like that has been scrapped or at least put on the shelf for a good while since it's been a very, very long time since we last had any updates on that. And quite frankly, with the involvement of John as well as Phil, as we're going to get to in a quick second, uh, it might be unlikely we see that in the future. I'm not entirely sure. There was also plans for Flumpty's merchandise. We do know that he was originally going to be getting a U2's figurine, uh, though that also has seemingly been scrapped or Again, maybe just put on the shelf because YouTube has asked the community publicly, hey, do you guys still want to see this figure release? Obviously, this segment of the fanverse is just a little bit difficult to talk about. Even if you completely dismiss John, which again, very, very valid if you do, you gotta admit the fanverse gave Flumpty's fans more content to enjoy, and it lived up to that. An unfortunate outlier that Scott could not have predicted, it's not proof of the fanverse being a bad decision, this kind of thing could have happened in literally any job or agreement. All right, well now let's move on to the main topic for today, FNAF Plus. This one was unique, because unlike the other games in the fanverse, this was a complete reimagining of the very first FNAF game. Now we got a lot for FNAF Plus. In fact, it even had a Steam page, which had its own announcement trailer. We got like five teaser videos for it, maybe six. Connection error, routine check, quiet hours, stage performance, night mode. I think there was one with the newspaper as well that I think Kane's neglecting to mention on this list. And of course we had breaking and entering, like a full 13 minute giant animation of this person exploring the building, showing off the terrifying models of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, even Foxy in some hidden shots, going in ghost hunting around this abandoned building. The tension was insane. The atmosphere was horrid in the best way possible. We got like in-universe posters of the Celebrate poster, as well as posters featuring Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, you know, references like Chipper and Sons and Helpy. We saw a whole bunch of gameplay screenshots. There was really a whole lot for Plus and even though a lot of people were upset with Phil, who's the creator, because of his antics he got up to online of just overall kind of acting like a jerk, that was his character. People were beyond excited for this game. And I know a lot of you guys are too, because some of my most popular videos on this channel are talking about FNAF Plus, which is why this video in particular is very hard to make. Because as I mentioned at the top of this video, FNAF Plus seemingly is no longer releasing. Now, just like the John situation, the situation with Phil is very messy. It involves a lot of topics I don't feel comfortable talking about here on the channel. So, as well as Kane's thread, uh, Watch the Skies over on the FNAF subreddit also put together a really thoughtful, well-written thread going over the controversy involving Phil. That's gonna be linked down below. I'll give you the very basics. Basically, it all started off with Phil streaming Ruin, and it went, well, just about as you'd expect. And after he played it, he tweeted out, well, that was boring. Instantly, he got a whole bunch of backlash, a lot of people saying, well, let's say this about FNAF Plus when that comes out. Let's pirate FNAF Plus when that comes out. And it resulted in those people being sent some really graphic stuff in their DMs. Death threats, as well as gore, which is just unacceptable to any degree. Phil was shown that this was happening, and he started liking replies and tweets at him that showed, hey, these people are getting sent some really gross graphic shit. And unfortunately, instead of just addressing it and making a very simple tweet to everyone, hey, don't do this, this is messed up, Phil just kind of did nothing. He did some more trolling, linking back to that troll Rickroll Rick roll video. It got so out of hand, some people even started emailing Scott about the whole thing, and for a while, it was just kind of quiet. A few days later, some people looked on the Steam page for FNAF Plus, and they noticed that Phil was now no longer credited as the developer. In fact, the developer role was removed completely. And looking on the discussion forums for the Steam page, people found out that Phil was actually banned from speaking. After a few days of silence, Phil would upload a video to his channel saying my current situation. It was a full 40 minute long video, which even if you completely resent Phil for what he did, I would absolutely recommend giving this a watch. Not only does it detail the situation in much clearer defined detail than I could possibly do in this video, it also gives his side of the story, which either way in situations, I'd love to hear out the second opinion of people. Uh, it reveals a lot of stuff that Phil was dealing with behind the scenes, including a stalker, a uh, really messed up situation, as well as his thoughts on being put on such a high pedestal that I don't feel comfortable translating to you guys. Towards the end of the video, he mentions that his contract had been completely terminated. He's no longer working on FNAF Plus. He can't talk about FNAF Plus. The fanverse, all of his Videos and fan games mentioning FNAF will be removed, which they were. Uh, and now with confirmation that Phil is no longer developing FNAF Plus, a lot of people were curious, 
what's gonna happen with the game and then a few days later we got the message on the official steam page for the game notice fnaf plus is now no longer available on the steam store phil said he's gonna be taking an extended break and then after that he wants nothing to do with fnaf he's separating himself from the franchise he's gonna focus on other solo personal projects but again where does that leave fnaf plus because the game's not finished i saw a lot of people taking some phil replies and saying oh he said he finished the game six months ago Clearly, he's trolling there. Considering the game is being made in Game Maker Studio, an engine that Scott doesn't know how to use, Click Team doesn't know how to use, who are the publisher of FNAF Plus, no other fanverse dev knows how to use Game Maker Studio, as far as I'm aware. Kane and Emil both work in Click Team. Uh, Nixon works in Unreal Engine. I do find it very unlikely that Scott's gonna search around and find someone to hire to finish the project. And even still, if they did find someone who finished the game and they released it and, you know, everyone gets to play it, there are still a lot of people who wouldn't want to play it because that's not what Phil's vision was. So now we're left with the current dilemma. The Steam page is done. You know, it's not up anymore. Phil's not finishing the game. There's no one who immediately can finish the game inside the FNAF developer sphere, it seems. So as much as it sucks, all things right now are simply pointing to the game's not coming out. I'm curious to know if we will see any more projects added to the fanverse to make up for these kind of scrapped projects like Flumpties and Plus. I really doubt it after everything the initiative has been through, but I, I don't know, man. That's going to do it for this news and discussion video. As unfortunate as the apparent cancellation of Plus is, like I said, Pop Goes, Fnac, T Chalk, we still got those projects to look forward to. Whole bunch of merchandise and games for those projects still on the way, and hopefully those can fill the void we have for other projects. But I love to know what are your thoughts on the fanverse? What are your thoughts on what's going on with Plus? Tell me how do you feel in the comments down below. Thanks for watching this probably very long news and discussion video, and I'll catch you all on the flip side. Goodbye.